Hello and welcome to my channel. I hope you enjoy this story. I'm going to try and upload a new story each day. The Malevolent Monolith Holly Arnold, a seasoned archaeologist with a thirst for uncovering the mysteries of the past, stood at the mouth of the cave on the Isle of Wight. The entrance yawned open before her, a dark and foreboding abyss that seemed to whisper secrets from the ancient world. The island, known for its prehistoric remains and storied history, had always fascinated her. But nothing had prepared her for what she would find within this cavern. Holly was leading a team of researchers, a group of brilliant minds brought together by a shared passion for discovery. There was Dr. Marcus Lane, a geologist with a keen eye for the extraordinary, Sarah Peters, an expert in ancient languages, and Tom Watson, a robust young archaeologist with a knack for unearthing hidden treasures. Their journey had led them to this cave, driven by rumors of an unusual structure buried deep within its depths, a monolith that predated recorded history. As they descended into the cave, the air grew colder, and the light from their torches flickered against the damp walls, casting eerie shadows that danced like phantoms. The cave seemed to go on forever, twisting and turning through the earth, a labyrinth of stone that felt almost alive. After hours of navigating the treacherous passages, they finally reached a cavernous chamber. In the center stood the monolith, partially buried in the ground, its surface covered in strange, indecipherable carvings. It was a towering slab of obsidian, its black surface absorbing the light and giving off an almost imperceptible hum. Holly's heart raced with excitement. This is it, she whispered, running her fingers over the smooth, cold surface. This is what we've been looking for, Marcus approached, his eyes wide with awe. It's incredible. I've never seen anything like it. This could be the find of the century. Sarah began to document the carvings, her fingers tracing the ancient symbols. These markings, they don't match any known language. It's as if they were made by something not of this world. Tom started to clear the earth around the base of the monolith, his muscles straining as he worked to reveal more of the structure. We need to be careful, he said, his voice echoing in the vast chamber. We don't know what we're dealing with here. Hours turned into days as the team meticulously excavated the monolith. With each layer of earth removed, more carvings were revealed, each one more intricate and bizarre than the last. The symbols seemed to tell a story, one of a great evil imprisoned within the stone, an ancient power that had been locked away for millennia. One evening, as the team gathered around a campfire outside the cave, Sarah shared her findings. I've been able to piece together some of the story, she said, her voice trembling with both excitement and fear. The monolith is a prison, a seal that contains an entity of unimaginable darkness that was buried here to keep the world safe from its malevolence, Tom frowned, perking at the fire with a stick. Are you saying we could be in danger? Holly nodded, her face grim. We need to be extremely cautious. If what Sarah says is true, we could be dealing with something far beyond our understanding. Despite their fears, the lore of discovery was too great. They continued their work, driven by a combination of curiosity and a sense of duty to uncover the truth. But as they dug deeper, strange things began to happen. It started with small, unsettling occurrences. Tools went missing, only to reappear in odd places. Shadows moved where there should have been none. Whispering voices echoed through the cave, speaking in a language none of them understood. The team grew more on edge with each passing day, their nerves frayed by the mounting tension. One night, as Holly sat alone by the monolith, studying the carvings, she felt a chill run down her spine. The air around her seemed to grow heavier, pressing in on her from all sides. She looked up and saw a figure standing at the edge of the chamber, shrouded in darkness. Who's there? She called out, her voice shaking. The figure stepped forward, and Holly's breath caught in her throat. It was Tom, but his eyes were vacant, his face twisted in an expression of terror. We shouldn't have come here, he said, his voice hollow. It's waking up. Before Holly could respond, Tom collapsed to the ground, convulsing violently. She rushed to his side, shouting for help. Marcus and Sarah came running, their faces pale with fear. What's happening to him? Sarah cried, kneeling beside Tom. Holly shook her head, tears streaming down her face. I don't know. Something's terribly wrong. As they tried to revive Tom, the monolith began to hum louder, the carvings glowing with an eerie light. The ground trembled beneath them, and a low, rumbling growl echoed through the chamber. 
We need to get out of here, Marcus shouted, pulling Holly to her feet. Now they fled the cave, carrying Tom between them, his body limp and unresponsive. As they reached the surface, the night sky was alive with swirling clouds, and the air crackled with electricity. They could feel the malevolent presence from the cave pursuing them, an unseen force that seemed to whisper their names on the wind. They made it back to their camp, but there was no sense of safety. The atmosphere was charged with dread, and they knew they couldn't stay. Tom's condition worsened, his skin turning ashen and his breathing shallow. Desperation drove them to seek help from the local authorities, but their story was met with skepticism. Undeterred, Holly turned to the island's folklore, searching for any mention of the monolith and the entity it contained. She discovered an old legend, a tale of an ancient evil that had once terrorized the island, causing death and destruction wherever it went. The people of the time had called upon a powerful shaman who had managed to imprison the entity within the monolith, sealing it away for eternity. Realizing the gravity of their situation, Holly knew they had to find a way to reseal the monolith before the entity could fully awaken and escape. She and her team returned to the cave, armed with the knowledge gleaned from the legend and the determination to set things right. As they approached the monolith, the air grew colder and the hum grew louder. Holly could feel the entity's malevolent presence, a palpable force that seemed to gnaw at her very soul. They began the ritual described in the legend, chanting the ancient words and placing sacred symbols around the monolith. The ground shook violently and a deafening roar filled the chamber as the entity fought against its confinement. Shadows swirled around them and the temperature plummeted. Holly could see the faces of those who had fallen victim to the entity's wrath, their eyes pleading for release. With a final, desperate effort, Holly completed the ritual. The monolith shuddered, and the carvings glowed with a blinding light. The entity let out a piercing scream as it was dragged back into its prison, the shadows dissipating and the air growing still. Exhausted and trembling, Holly and her team collapsed to the ground, the weight of their ordeal crashing down upon them. Tom, who had been on the brink of death, began to stir, his color slowly returning. We did it, Holly whispered, tears of relief streaming down her face. We stopped it, but as they made their way out of the cave, a lingering sense of unease remained. The monolith was sealed once more, but the memory of the entity's malevolence would haunt them forever. They had won this battle, but Holly knew that the ancient evil was not truly defeated, merely contained, waiting for another chance to break free. And as the winds held round the Isle of Wight, whispering secrets of the past, Holly couldn't shake the feeling that their victory was only temporary. The monolith stood as a silent sentinel, a grim reminder of the darkness that lurked just beneath the surface, waiting for the next unwitting soul to unearth its ancient evil. The weeks following their harrowing encounter with the monolith passed in a blow of recovery and reflection. Holly and her team were hailed as heroes by some and regarded with suspicion by others. The local authorities, once skeptical, had witnessed enough to offer guarded support, though they warned the team to stay away from the cave in the future. The island's residents, steeped in their own folklore, whispered that the evil within the monolith was not vanquished, merely sleeping. Holly couldn't escape the dreams. Each night she relived the terror of the cave, the malevolent presence, and the haunting faces of its victims. She awoke each morning drenched in sweat, the entity's whispering voice echoing in her mind. She knew that they had only bought themselves time. The monolith's power was not extinguished, it was merely biding its time. Despite the lingering fear, Holly was determined to uncover the full history of the monolith and find a permanent solution. She dove into research, scouring ancient texts, consulting with experts, and piecing together the fragmented story of the monolith's origins. The legend spoke of an ancient civilization that had once thrived on the Isle of Wight, a people with advanced knowledge of the mystical and the arcane. They had encountered the entity, a being of pure darkness that fed on fear and despair and had sacrificed everything to imprison it. The shaman who had sealed it away was said to have used a powerful artifact, a relic of immense power that had been lost to time. Holly knew that finding this artifact was their only hope of permanently neutralizing the entity. She shared her findings with Marcus, Sarah, and Tom, who had fully recovered and was eager to help. The team agreed to embark on another expedition, this time to find the artifact that could save them all. The research led them to the ruins of an ancient temple on the northern coast of the island. 
The temple, hidden within a dense forest, was rumored to be the last known location of the shaman's artifact. Armed with their knowledge and determination, they set out once more, their resolve steeled by the knowledge of what was at stake. As they trekked through the forest, the atmosphere grew increasingly oppressive. The trees seemed to close in around them, their all branches reaching out like skeletal hands. The wind whispered through the leaves, carrying with it faint echoes of the entity's voice. Holly could feel its presence, a dark shadow lurking just out of sight. After hours of navigating the dense underbrush, they finally reached the temple ruins. The structure was ancient, its stones worn and weathered by centuries of neglect. Vines and moss covered the walls, and the air was thick with the scent of decay. The entrance, partially collapsed, beckoned them into the darkness within. The team moved cautiously, their torches casting flickering shadows on the walls. The interior was a labyrinth of corridors and chambers, each one more foreboding than the last. Strange symbols adorned the walls similar to those on the monolith, their meanings lost to time. As they ventured deeper into the temple, they came upon a large, circular chamber. In the center stood a pedestal, and atop it rested a small, intricately carved box. Holly's heart raced as she approached the artifact, her hand trembling as she reached out to touch it. The moment her fingers brushed the surface of the box, a surge of energy shot through her, and the room was filled with a blinding light. The walls trembled, and a deep, resonant hum filled the air. Holly knew they had found the artifact, but she also knew that the entity was aware of their presence. We need to hurry, she said, her voice tight with urgency. The entity knows we are here. They carefully took the artifact and made their way back through the temple, the oppressive atmosphere growing heavier with each step. As they emerged into the forest, they could feel the entity's malevolent presence closing in around them. The journey back to the monolith was a race against time. The island seemed to come alive with the entity's wrath, the ground trembling and the wind howling with an otherworldly fury. Shadows flitted through the trees, and the air grew colder with each passing moment. When they finally reached the cave, they found it transformed. The entrance was wider, the earth around it scorched and blackened as if by some infernal fire. The air was thick with the stench of decay, and the monolith's hum was now a deafening roar. They descended into the cave, the artifact clutched tightly in Holly's hands. As they approached the monolith, the carvings glowed with an intense, malevolent light. The entity's presence was overwhelming, a dark force that seemed to press in on them from all sides. Holly placed the artifact on the ground before the monolith and began the ritual described in the ancient texts. The air crackled with energy, and the ground shook violently as the entity fought against its confinement. Shadows swirled around them, and the temperature plummeted. As Holly chanted the ancient words, the artifact began to glow, its light growing brighter and brighter until it rivaled the monolith's malevolent glow. The entity let out a deafening scream, a sound of pure rage and despair, as it was drawn back into its prison. With a final, desperate effort, Holly completed the ritual. The monolith shuddered, and the carvings glowed with a blinding light. The entity's scream faded into the distance, and the shadows dissipated. The air grew still, and the oppressive weight lifted. Exhausted and trembling, Holly and her team collapsed to the ground. The artifact had done its job, sealing the entity away once more, this time with a power that seemed permanent. They had succeeded in their mission, but the ordeal had taken its toll. As they made their way out of the cave, the first rays of dawn broke through the trees, casting a golden light over the landscape. The island seemed to breathe a sigh of relief, the darkness that had plagued it finally dispelled. Holly stood at the cave's entrance, looking back at the monolith one last time. She knew that the entity was still there, imprisoned but not destroyed. It was a reminder of the ancient power that lay beneath the surface, a power that should never be underestimated. The team returned to their lives, forever changed by their encounter with the malevolent monolith. They had faced the darkness and emerged victorious, but the memory of the entity's malevolence would haunt them forever. They had won this battle, but they knew that the war against the forces of darkness was far from over. And as the winds whispered through the trees and the waves crashed against the shores of the Isle of Wight, Holly couldn't shake the feeling that the entity was waiting, biding its time, ready to rise again when the stars aligned and the ancient seals weakened. 
The monolith stood as a silent sentinel, a grim reminder of the darkness that lurked just beneath the surface, waiting for the next unwitting soul to unearth its ancient evil. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed this story. Please don't forget to like and even better like and subscribe. Thank you very much and I hope you have had or have a great day.